Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been almost two weeks since we did any filming and part of the reason for that is when the weather has been good, we've been busy building. It has been absolutely horrendous up here. So we've got about five jobs done over the last two weeks. We've installed all of the windows on the van. We've installed a max air fan on the roof. We've done the complete removal of all of the plywood internally. And we've rust proofed all of the floor to make sure that when we do our install on all the cabinet furniture, we're not building over bad metal. We've also been busy in the cabin area. So we've installed swivel bases on the passenger seat and the driver's seat so we've now got a double swivel passenger and a single swivel driver's seat as well as the lowering kit to lower our handbrake and make sure that operates correctly. We've almost finished installing our head unit as well. So far we've managed to put in the reverse camera, the dab head unit and we've got the unit with a memory function on it with a live permanent live attached to the head unit as well as an ignition live on there as well couple of little tweaks but all in all i'm really happy with the head unit one of the first windows that we did were these rear windows we've chosen to put rear windows in because we're going to have a fixed bed in the back and this will be the view out the back of the the van on those nice summer nights and in the winter we'll be putting in some nice thermal curtains as well so on the rear windows and on the side windows as well we've put in finishing strips on the internals on the metals this just gives it a bit more of a factory finish when you order your windows our windows came from a company called van pimps absolutely amazing and at the same time as ordering the windows we ordered the window fixing kit as well as the external trim for our metal work and that has made all the difference with both of our side windows on the van we've gone for openers one of the reasons i've chosen to do this is to get as much ventilation through the van when we've got our kitchen going and then we're doing our cooking we want to get as much of that smell out of there as possible obviously we've got the max fan installed as well but any bit of ventilation will definitely help with that one thing that i've considered when i put my windows in is things like insulation the more windows that we obviously put in the quicker that we're going to lose heat we've chosen to go for quite an expensive heating system within the van so i'm confident we can keep the van warm however if i was building on a budget i might just go for one or two windows rather than going for four or five windows like we're doing on this build when we did the ply removal on this fan there were a heck of a lot of holes in the um base of the of the truck so we've gone and rust treated all of those with rust-oleum and then we've filled in all of the holes with silicon so we've got no water ingress coming into the van when we put our new floor down wheel arches were actually one of the worst areas in terms of rust so we've treated the whole wheel arch by using a wire brush on there rust oleum and then where we removed the factory seal where the metals met the metal we've just redone that with some silicon just to make sure that there's no ingress on water coming in again um, one area that we haven't touched and we're going to leave it to the body shop is the external skin and it's where our plastic trim is meeting the um, the metal work and we're getting some we're getting some water coming through on some of these panels again that'll be fixed in the next couple of weeks and it'll be back to new so we fitted both the double and the swivel base in the front the fit itself only took around about two to two and a half hours it is a very very straightforward swap you could do it even quicker i must admit when i did it i took about six hours but one of the reasons for that is when we had the seats out we chose to work on some of the electrical system and running wires through into the front compartment so if you can start to plan your build in advance you can kind of work two or three jobs at the same time and save yourself the hassle of having to take things apart and putting them back together over and over again because it does get boring very very quickly if i was to pick one thing that i don't like about the swivel bases it's is it's how high they raise you from the original position of these seats when i drive this crafter usually without the um, swivel bases in i feel like i'm sitting in my van because this has raised our seats by about another three or four inches, it's quite noticeable and I feel more like I'm sitting on top of it rather than in it. So what we'll do very quickly is show you how these chairs look when they're flipped around and what a difference it will make once we've got the rest of this van built out. What we're doing now is you've got eight of these um, hand tighteners on the double base and you've got four of them on the single. Um, Another thing to consider with these bases is you are adding weight to your truck and they do weigh 
quite a few kilos. When you're parked up, remember that you don't need to put all back, uh, all of the eight fasteners back in. Just putting in four of them will be absolutely fine because you're not moving. These chairs are pull tested as well, so that's why you are paying a premium for these bases. Uh, we paid £460 for the full set. That included the double swivel base, the single swivel base and the handbrake lowering kit. You can buy all of those things separately and um, the reason for that is you may want to go for two singles rather than have uh, the, the double in here. So now that we've got all of those four bolts, you can see this moves so, so easily. And there you have it. That's our double base. The swivel bases came from a company called R&J Camper Solutions. They had absolutely fantastic customer support. I called them three or four times just to ask them little questions and they gave me loads of useful advice. Biggest tip they gave me is that when you are installing these chairs, take off your single, take off your double, then do your handbrake, then put your single on, then put your double on in that order and it makes things a lot easier. Getting those chairs out of the way whilst you're putting your base in is really the best way to do it. One thing you might have noticed in the introduction video two weeks ago is we already had these tyres fitted. We didn't buy them with the truck, they were an upgrade. Um, I considered getting new alloys for the vehicle as well, but to get weight rated alloys for crafters, you are talking a hell of a lot of money. And with the budget that we're blowing on this, I didn't think it was necessary. Instead, we've gone ahead and we've spent our money on wrapping our steel rims in BFG 80 uh, K2O tires and for anyone that's interested the fitment on these are 225 75 16. Now the 225 stands for your width and on a crafter I wouldn't recommend going up any more than a 245 wide tire. If you go up to 265 they will fit but you will have to make some adjustments to some of your wheel wells and cut a few things out so you can get your full lock on your front wheels, but they're absolutely fantastic tires. One of the reasons I love them and I fit them to two other vehicles as well is they have this really good side protection on, on the tire itself. And that is one area where these tend to, or any tires tend to perish. They're also snow and mud rated. And this being a rear wheel drive van in Scotland, we wanted to make sure we were as safe as possible and we had maximum stopping safety on there. So super happy and I would totally recommend these if you're Budget does stretch to them. So the head unit that we've chosen to put in here is a double din head unit by Pioneer. I do have one of these in another one of my cars that was about 400 pounds and with that we did get Android Auto installed in the head unit. This doesn't come with that function, it does give us um, the Apple version of um, car auto unfortunately i'm on samsung so it doesn't work for me however i've still got my bluetooth functionality i can still hook up to spotify we've hooked up our dab um, radio into the car as well it's not a straightforward fix the wiring loom that is standard in a vw crafter does not work with most aftermarket head units you may be able to get an adapter I didn't do that. I've just run a new permanent live and an ignition live to my head unit off of the battery and the ignition live has just been piggybacked off of another fuse within the fuse box. Um, do your research when it comes to head units. I'm really happy with this. We don't have any sort of map system on here but we do have our reverse camera installed now so we can use that on here as well. Um, installing the head unit, the hardest part about it is not putting the head unit in, it's stripping out the rest of this dash to run your wires and be prepared to spend at least two or three hours pulling off all your clips, all of these interior trim panels just to get a nice finish to everything you do. You can cheat, you can bodge it, you can run it on the outside, we haven't done that. We've got our microphone right above the driver here, we've got our dab unit just above the window there and it looks perfect um, and with what we want to do with this truck I wanted to get that finish completely looking like it was stock again. So that's the end of the first two weeks of building our van. We've taken out the interior, we've rust treated, we've put in our roof fan, we've installed four windows, 
the doubled in head unit, new tyres, respray on the steel rims, and we're in it for around about three and a half thousand pounds already. Remember, things like tyres, 160 pounds a corner. All of these windows have cost around about 500 pounds. The double din, din head unit and fascia were about another 220 pounds with wiring. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. In terms of build hours so far for the first two weeks, I would guesstimate that we've put around about 45 to 50 hours build time into the van and around about another 150 hours on planning the build, ordering parts and making sure that we measure everything three or four times before we cut any holes or make any decisions. Um, if you've got any questions, if you've seen anything that I've done wrong, please put them in the comments. Don't forget to follow our channel as we carry on with this build process. We will be hiring this van out with our company Wandering Icons that is based up in Scotland. So if you're looking for a little bit of an escape for this coming summer, drop us a line at wanderingicons.co.uk and don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in a week or two. Bye guys.